Welcome to Drinking Bros. Put down the water and grab a fucking drink. Welcome, 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 welcome back to the Drinking Bros podcast. Woo, 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 woo. Ooh, that's a lot of energy out of Rocco tonight. Yeah, so energy. much energy. This is take I, seven. He kept is, saying the potato dick I, podcast. Yes, I keep fucking it up. I'm so trash <laughs> already. So we are here right now. This is Rocco speaking right now. And obviously to my left, the one with the beautiful cheekbones in town, Hi, Rocco. Matt Bass. Oh, hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. He's available. Yes. <laughs> he is always available. Who me? And again, why are you wearing the same shirt you wore last because week? Because I bought four. That is Jared Taylor. JT uh, in the motherfucking house. I will always wear my dink shirt when we record. Also, the man of the hour, the man with the big dick himself, <laughs> Ross Patterson. Only one. Only I, oh, one. God. I, I almost drove over it. I had the window down in my car. I almost drove over it here on the way over. So we, we, <laughs> One of these days, we might need a picture of that duck. And we are... Are here, Rocco. With we we have a special guest today. His name is Alex. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me over. Yeah, here. That's all, that's wow. don't sound monotone at all. Hey, yeah. Don't sound yeah. monotone yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah. This is my this is my radio. Voice. That is such a sexy. <laughs> uh, se- wait, do, do a sexy like radio that. voice. Yeah. How's it going, guys? Damn. <laughs> yeah, tell tell us that we're about to hear some good jams in, yeah. in a few moments. Yeah. Yes, it's going to be the sweet low jams tonight. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you sound like Art LeBeau on Sunday nights. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. Hey, Tell if you're me, listening right now, just so you guys know, this is our New Year's podcast. Ow! Bring New Year's Eve. Happy New, New Year's, everybody. Happy, Happy New, New Year's. Year's. You better be getting Burr. fucked up. Hey, I'm going to hand it off to JT, and he's going to go over some of the well, sponsors. I'm going to steal it real quick. Wait, a little backstory on, on the good Alex here. Alex is a close friend of ours. Yes. Um, no you might have seen him. You might have not. Maybe not. Really like talkative. Super talkative. Super talkative. He's like <laughs> Kurt when, when Ross thought he was uh, real. No, but Alex is a good friend of ours. He does a lot of video production, a lot of serial stuff that we'll get into on this podcast. But welcome to the show, my brother. Thanks, oh, guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for having me. Welcome, Drop those Alex. Welcome. Fucking sponsors. Yeah, we'll get more into we'll get I'm more motivated on this episode. Ooh, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Drinking Bros podcast. <laughs> Tonight's show <laughs> is brought to you by none other than Lead Slinger's Whiskey, the greatest whiskey <laughs> in the world. <laughs> and one of the pieces of the greatest literature written in American history. At night she cries while he rides his steed. <laughs> My dick the is first still ever hard. romance yeah. novel for I, I, I read that last yes. week and my dick is still hard. Dude, I came still without even touching my dick. Yeah, exactly. God damn. Ugh, we all know that. Both it's a zipper great. ripper. It's a good old fashioned zipper yeah. ripper. The, pa- the pages before, they're all stuck together. The whole goddamn thing. I can't even open it anymore. Additionally, sponsoring tonight's show is Stealth USA Gear, <laughs> makers of some great holsters. Also, adding to that lineup is Little Bird LLC. Ooh, Pilot X, the Ooh, baddest hello. motherfucker on the planet. Pilot X, who we supplies are motivated. us. I love this shit. Supplies us with all. Our f- rotary wing flight needs. Yeah. Pilot X. <laughs> hey, Mexico, Pilot X. No he's my other than Malcolm. He's my favorite X. That's, uh, right. Right. that's, that's <laughs> pretty good. And Matthew, who was our final sponsor? Last for the but not least, oh. two veteran arms. Two veteran arms. They make great pew pew sticks. They, I mean, they don't make me a better shooter. I'm still I, shooting everywhere. But I uh, love Dean Deneth because he doesn't take anyone's bullshit. No, we, Dean don't fuck around. No, Dean don't take no shit. He don't take no. Dean shit. don't take no shit. Ain't about <laughs> kid ain't about the shit. Get him, get his bitches oh, better be wearing There goes that man. There goes that man. I, I, everybody that has ever worked inside the firearms industry and the technical industry knows that everyone's an expert. Uh, and yeah, when you yeah. are a gun manufacturer, oh the emails that you get, I mean, God. some of the things I, that Dean shares he, is yeah. just I, like... I kind of want to say a funny story about Dean. He came down and visited us in El Paso. Yes. We had a great time. He always comes down and visit. We had a great time together. But the only thing that he ever talks about from his last trip here was that we went to fucking Walmart and he had to wear my slippers and they were too big for his feet. So like now he calls me, he goes, I just can't get over wearing those goddamn big ass fucking he's slippers. He's so angry. I'm like, the, the dude, ang- that was seven months ago. You're talking about he's, fucking he's slippers. He's Dean from Two Vets. He's yeah. a DV. He's yeah. DV. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna call you right now. I'm so pissed that oh, you just said that. You motherfucker. Motherfucker, don't you ever do that. Is that how Dean talks? Yeah, Dean's black. He's from in, Oklahoma. Yeah, in our heads, <laughs> yeah. Dean's yeah. black. Yeah. I mean, because he don't take no shit. He don't take. 
You don't take no shit. <laughs> hey, Ross, how's that big dick on the east side, bro? We missed that musk. We wish we were hanging out with you Dude, for New his Year's. his dick smells weird. I, opened, no, up, I opened up the dryer this morning. I think I smelled his dick. It's huge. <laughs> Why were you in my house? It is laying on a stool next to me. It is having a, it is having a, a fine having mug a, of ale. Yeah, it's having it's, his own drink. Yeah, it's like it the it's like the 18th century in Ireland over here. So it drinks it's just from a two, straw. Two men just sitting on stools, just enjoying a thick, thick beverage. What's, speaking what's that, of which, what's, yeah, speaking what's of which, big... tonight I am drinking Guinness. Tonight I'm drinking Ooh, Guinness. One of my favorites. A thick, Ross. thick beer. Yeah. I got to go on the diet in the I've, New Year's. Thought I, I'd get it out of the way for the holidays. I'm, I'm drinking a thick Guinness, and so is my dick. Who I've got a, I've tonight, got a Matt? funny story about uh, Ross's dick. I've sh- I've shared a hotel with Ross, and his dick has his uh, has its own Kindle. So like you're trying to sleep, and his dick is up reading. Yeah. 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 reading yeah. Go to sleep, reading. dick. Go <laughs> to but, sleep. But like really fancy literature. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like yeah. reading the Art of the War. Iliad. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I, believe, I believe it was reading the Iliad last. He was reading time, Jared. Amistad. He had a small <laughs> pair of glasses on, and yeah. it kept licking the screen. He was, like it was. Turning the screen. It's like reading the geometrics <laughs> of the Earth. Ross, re- is, re- Ross is snoring. Across. Ross yeah. is snoring. He's and his dick is still turning it's, pages. It's, 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 there's a light coming out like a tent wait, in the sheets. Please tell me it has reading glasses. Oh yeah. Oh, it's, it's got reading glasses no, at the end because it's it's seen it it's seen a lot. It's, it it's needs worldly. reading glasses and it needs the fucking light you get when you buy a snuggie that clips yeah. onto the fucking book. You know, it's, like two dollar light. It's watching and, porn and, and got a little embarrassed because he's making judgmental looks at Jared the entire night. Yeah, yeah. yeah the dick, Why are you being such a dick? Because I'm a dick. The dick blushes because yeah. you caught him watching porn. Yeah, but he watches dick porn. He watches, he watches other porn. dicks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, because it, not, not because he likes it. He wants to see what, yeah, what else other dicks. Yeah. Like yeah. Other dick selfies. No, it's like PO, <laughs> no, yeah, it's, it's, it's POV jack off. Yeah. So all you see is the D jacking off. So he's yeah. like, that could be me. Yeah. yeah. Jack off oh, envy. Man. Yeah. Oh, man. So we, we, we went a whole five minutes into the another yet another drinking bros <laughs> podcast Sorry. before we were talking about dick on dick. Something um, about your dick. We, uh, we're high, high, high we're ringing it tonight. in. You're ringing it in. My dick rang it in three weeks ago. That That's how big it was. God, um, damn. It was already at New Year's. Ross, you, know, you want to know what I'm fucking drinking? Because I'm drinking out of the norm tonight, yeah, right now. Did, I, I wasn't even sure. I wasn't even sure it was Matt when he walked in. <laughs> I'm, it's real <laughs> fucked up. I'm drinking Tito's vodka and tonic, but they're not in a cup. I'm individually drinking them, yeah, and I'm not lying. I'm <laughs> yeah. just got Canada dry. You're going bottle swigging. to bottle. You're going Just bottle so the to bottle. drinking bros do not know, I'm literally going to send you a picture right now, Ross. But uh, We're going to hear it buzz. Want to yeah. know why? I actually have the cover of Texas Inc. magazine on, uh, holy shit, the third I have to film. So yeah. I'm you know, I'm leaning off the, the more beer squats. for a second. Come more, more squats. More squats. You know, fuck. Yeah, so squats, he's going for the two. A lot of yeah. squats. But you should see him drink this. He takes a I'm, small sip. Here, I'll, of, I'll do it for you. Ready? Yeah. So go, you go, he takes a small sip of the Tito's vodka as we speak, and now yeah. the washing can, it down with the can of dry. Yeah. And dude, listen, it's it's distilled in Austin, Texas. Tito's is the shit. That's my text, oh, I Ross. I heard it. Yeah. Hey, I'm excited that, that, that about my text that came through. So it's it's legitimate. You guys, are I'm, on the I'm excited about my drink tonight. What is it? I'm oh drinking. Oh boy, hey, Jared, is it like yeah, is it yeah. like Nyquil and Nyquil and, yeah. and, and, and like Kahlua? Yeah, I'm drinking. I'm drinking the uh, frozen concentrate grape juice in Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! You Holy leave. You leave the ice shit. in there. I, you, yeah. I used to are you watching two two seven reruns, <laughs> dude? Like, what, what are you <laughs> hey Ross, he's got gold teeth in all yeah. of a sudden. <laughs> and he's like, "Don't be a menace to society while you're drinking your Look, juice in the I hill. like to sh- shake it up a bit, and I've got my dink it up cup. <laughs> dink it up. Oh, dude, boy. that's a cup. Dink it up, dink bro. Dink it up, bro. Hey, you gonna dink it up? <laughs> dude, dude, you my voice me so much. Juice, some, hey, juice and some people have called us the Dinkin Bros because of how many times? <laughs> oh, no. You no, Peter Dinklage no. me. Listen, Peter Dinklage is a national icon. It, I know. He's Look, right by up now, there with everybody's, everybody's yeah. seen your Dinklage t-shirt that is all over Facebook that you wore to our other podcast. God. Um, I just don't get it. He, he, Alex, he, what are you drinking tonight? Yeah. What are you drinking over there? Uh, I decided to go local. So I got the legendary Texas beer, Alamo Golden Ale. And it literally says, brewed with a fiercely independent spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask, let me ask, is it good? Do you remember the Alamo? Do I do it? not remember the Alamo. I do yeah, remember the, the, the Alamo, the, the movie. So the beer wasn't that good, then, was it? I, no. <laughs> and, 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 and I also remember the movie, the Alamo, and it fucking sucked. <laughs> I didn't uh, watch Dennis, it. Was, was it Dennis Quaid in that? It, it was, was Quaid, Dennis Quaid but... and Billy Bob Thornton. 
I've got two oh, good Bebop. movies to talk about today. Wait, wait, one of them, Bebop. one of them, Alex wait, well, Ross, recommended. Ross has the. I mean, Rock hasn't told you what he's drinking. Oh they, fuck! Are you, already, are you already drunk? You cock. Just shut up, dude! It's Hennessy and grape juice. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> he's, a, he's a cunt. You're drinking, so great, you're drinking grapefruit juice over there. <laughs> yeah, he's wait, sagging like shuffleboard. his pants too. Rocco, before yeah. you tell what you, us what you're drinking, I always like when Ross guesses what you're drinking. I yeah. put because there's no fucking way he's gonna get four this packets of Goodies powder in my drink. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it's uh, okay. So I'm I, wait. I, uh, there's a there's a magic eight ball in front of me. I'm gonna guess it's super Mexican. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's boy. a weird Mexican. You're not gonna get it. Yeah, yeah he might. Uh, it's a southern tropical Mexican. He, he might. He is might. it is it Pacifico? Are you drinking Pacifico? No, yeah. he's already drank Paci- Pacifico. No, 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 like if you the same <laughs> thing again, you don't have to drink no. other. Here, I'm gonna shit give you a clue, Ross. If you're if you're like. 22 years old and a white girl, and you're visiting Four Can- Loco. Are you Cancun drinking fucking for the Four first Loco? Time. No, but Are you're you drinking Four Can- Loco. Can- Come on, Coon it's the, the day. Time. It's the day after your first day at spring break. Exactly. You wake up and you want a day drink. What does she grab? A Tecate. Uh, oh, oh. He's, here he goes. It's a Bud Light with Clamato and extra lime. <laughs> oh, so it's you a got you, Oh my God! You just use my face as a restroom. <laughs> just use my face as a restroom. <laughs> <laughs> the Clamato yeah. shit is the worst. It fucking dude, it's so shit. gross, You're but Rocco crazy. loves it. It's I love oh, it, dude. I, I drink. Have, I drink I those sh- all the time. I, I have a horror. Oh, like, like, I feel like I'm wearing a baby diaper on my <laughs> face. I, I, was, like da- I was dating this really. Wait, wait. You say a baby diaper? in space <laughs> yeah i feel I was, like i'm wearing a baby diaper on my face it could be in space but i feel like i'm wearing one on my face i was dating that. this that really needy makes girl me feel like and she she demanded that she had a clamato and i drove to like seven different places yeah. and she still wouldn't let it go like dude I, I just can't find it like well you're not coming home until you find it you can make it dude i make I it at home all the time just like v8 tomato juice do that. Yeah. yeah you know my fridge didn't work as well you can put a little bit of uh worcestershire sauce whatever how you ever say it worcestershire yeah worcestershire that's sauce. for like worcestershire? some worcestershire. lime no, some lime some pepper ah. yeah, why yeah, yeah. You, hey hey rocco i got an idea why don't you make that and then throw a, a maxi pad in it that's what that sounds like to me. You stir it with a maxi so pad. Yeah, just so stir it with that and then drink out of the pad all you're night so long. Because that is... You're saying we're uncultured and you're drinking a Bud Light and Clamato extra Damn lime it. out of a 24, 25 ounce fucking can. Tall boys. My dick is nodding boys. at you. My, my dick is nodding in disapproval right now. Is it you a shame? See it, oh, God. Like, God. I imagine like Ross's dick is the reincarnation of Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> like it's refined, it knows stuff. It just really it's disappointed. It drinks all the time. Jeff Dunham's old man puppet. Jeff Dunham's old man puppet, it it Dunham's old <laughs> man puppet oh is what it is. <laughs> it wears a tie on the weekends. Yeah. It's oh, the <laughs> it's the Forest Whit. It's like Forest Whitaker. God, it's we just started. And I have to take a piss. It's got a lazy yeah. eye. We need a urinal in here so we don't we have should. to go. Yeah, we should. Well, just you go in your hands or you go in that drink because it, it tastes Maybe like the same thing. You're drinking your own piss. A bucket. I'm pinching the tip. Uh, he was. He was so tip. Alex recommended a, a a movie to me today, and I watched it, and it was it, okay. Well, so what? Alex, Alex, yeah. before you get into it, uh, would this be your top movie since it's our New Year's Eve show? Is this your top movie of 2015? No, sure. you, said you sure. don't know what it is. is it sure, no, I recommended it to you. So oh, it's so gotta be one of them. It, right? it was the imposter. What is the doc- it? it? The imposter. Doc- the documentary. Yeah. Okay. Have you seen it, Ross? Yeah, I have. I have. It's it's pretty good. Dude, that guy was that guy was a legit lunatic, but a good one. Holy shit! Uh, to be uh, to be fair, Ross, I'd say if I'd recommend any doc this year, it'd have to be the Jinx. Did you see that shit? Ah, oh, I love the Jinx. Yeah. Big fan of the Jinx. Yeah, that was when pretty he, fucking well, awesome. When he went to the bathroom and they left that hot mic on, uh, dude, I thought the producers were gonna get sued for that. No lie, because that's withholding evidence, I think. Either way, it made for the best fucking TV show of the year. So just to read our fucking viewers and our listeners into the jinx is about it. So you, you want to tell the story, Ross, because you're the uh, Hollywood insider on kind of the history on this thing? You know, it's funny. I was actually super late to the jinx party for the first time ever. Uh, typically, I'm in the know. I'm on the end in the Hollywood scene. But uh, I was shooting your movie, which required every last ounce of my time for about three months. And... At the end of it, when we finished shooting, the Jinx was trending number one on Twitter. And I was like, what the fuck is the Jinx? And then it said about Robert Durst and went into this story. And they were like, he said he fucking killed these people. So I went backwards in it. So I knew from the get-go 
that he had killed these people. So I got to watch the entire thing leading up to it, trying to figure out why they couldn't solve this crime. Because to me, as you went along throughout his life, the evidence was there plain as day all along. But he, he was either rich enough to get off every time or the jury was crazy enough that they went along with it. Like when he di dismembered that body in Texas, he told them he killed his neighbor and then dismembered the body. They found all the body parts and everything, but he said he was in the right and they agreed with him and let him go. And I was like, what the fuck? Step I, one I mean, to murder. <laughs> never yeah, admit it. But he anywhere. murdered yeah. he murdered like four or five people. Oh my god. And each time it seems really, really obvious. I remember yeah, Ross, you were telling me about this when we were driving in LA and I never I have I have yet to follow up and check it out. So so um, are you guys recording at a Kinder Care tonight? Is is that one of our sponsors? Is Kinder Care? <laughs> I know the baby. Sorry, the baby was going off. All right, so I guess uh, the deal with the uh, Jarecki, the uh, the director, is he did that movie All Good Things with uh, I think it was Ryan Gosling, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's hot. It was Gosling and Nicole Kidman, right? Yeah, yes. it was, and it was yeah. about Robert Durst. And I guess yes. after it premiered, uh, Robert Durst hits him up via phone or whatever. And he's like, hey, you know, uh, I think you should tell my story. And Jarecki's like, absolutely, let's do it. And I guess uh, from a production value, he sat down and did all those interviews first and then went back to HBO and he's like, hey, look, you know, look what I'm getting from this guy. And they're like, hey, just keep doing interviews and see what comes out of it. And uh, eventually that's when he got that hot mic where he literally confessed to all the murders. And then that's when they went back and turned it into like a miniseries. And uh, I think he like cut a deal with the with the police. So like... Uh, the last episode that they premiered where he basically shows his guilt, the next day, literally, uh, the feds arrested him in some, like, hotel. Uh, I, got a I, I, get, yeah, I got a crazier story for you, Alex, about that. Uh, you butt fuck the bomb on Sunset. <laughs> no, no, he didn't oh. He didn't cut a deal, and he wanted to be super fucking famous, and he was watching the show as it was going on, and as he kept gaining steam and, and getting more and more famous, then he was gonna, then he tried to run. So they wow. found him with a, with a disguise, like a beard, uh, a latex mask, um, forty thousand dollars in cash. We in need a to get on this. This is something good. Yeah, I want to check. He, out. he was a, he was a he had a handgun and it was in uh, I believe they caught him in New Orleans or yeah yeah it was New Orleans. Hey, wow. is, is this like a recreation or is it actual? Real no no footage? no. This is a real person. Uh, They've got real no, no, footage. No. Oh, so it's real footage. It's not like it's like not like Pablo Escobar. What they're doing with that. no, one hundred percent. This is going on right now, and he, oh, he got arrested. Cool. He, he got arrested a week after the show uh, aired, the last episode. No he's shit. in jail now, and he's 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 waiting on a... They're going to retry him Damn. on a murder that he was tried for in L.A. That's crazy. The other ones they can't retry him for. Um, but <laughs> Double it, to jeopardy. Me, it seemed like he wanted to get caught. Yeah. yeah. Be, because why do, why do this? Like, he'd gotten away with, like, four or five murders. Why go back? Why do this whole interview? And especially, he's, like, 80. Why do it at this point in your life if you didn't want to get caught? Or probably, didn't feel yeah, some probably to make a legacy. You yeah, know how those yeah. guys are. If you're that fucked in the head, you, you want some form of affirmation. So the one I was talking about, the imposter, it's free on Netflix. So anybody that has Netflix, just search the imposter. This 23 year old dude wanted by Interpol out of France is in Spain, makes a call to the police, posing as a tourist, saying they just found this kid that's homeless and. Sitting in the rain, oh, yeah, we so he gets about this taken. Day. He gets taken to a, a a shelter, and he won't speak to anyone. And they're like, "Well, Alex, this we, is what we talked about earlier yeah. today, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my we, God. We've got to kick you out if you're not going to speak." He's like, "Well, I'm American, so just give me an office at night, and I'll call my parents, and I'll have them, you know, tell you that it's me." And yada yada. yada. This dude's crazy smart. Guy starts calling all these police stations, saying that uh, overnight, saying that he's a, a, a police officer in Spain. They found a kid, you know. He's calling New York, L.A., everywhere until finally one of these police officers sent him to the center in Virginia for missing children. And so he starts describing himself to the person at this center for missing children until they they think they have a match. He has him fax over all the details, and he just says he's this kid. And gets returned back to that kid's parents. Oh my yep. god! Yeah, but the, <laughs> yeah, but the craziest thing is the family. I mean, this guy obviously doesn't look like the original kid at all. But the fucking pa f family continues. The family goes along with it. Yeah, yeah. they go along with it. Yeah. And, and some yeah. private investigator starts snooping around. He figures out that the family knows it's not him. So why the fuck are they covering up for this guy? And they do a little search, and they basically f f find out that like the stepfather was like molesting the Someone kid that the was family. actually molest that was actually missing. 
So they think that the family fucking killed, killed the, the kid. original kid. Oh, so they just shit. were like, yeah. "Oh yeah, we got the kid. There he is. There's <laughs> our pride like, and joy." It takes like he's nine posing. Oh, twists in he's that posing way. as a sixteen-year-old. He's really twenty-three. Dude, you can't make that shit up. He, dude. he tells the FBI that he was kidnapped and sold into an underground, like European military God. sex ring where Damn. they, they, they. They beat you if you speak your negative language. They change your name. They change your eyes. They change your hair because they won't. Yeah. They don't want you to be who you were. Yeah. Like he he just comes up with this fucking long list of shit. So then when they arrest, they they end up arresting him. He spends like a year of his life in jail, and he's calling people with missing children, just pretending to have information. Like this dude's fucking nuts. Oh my god. Yeah, that's out there. But man. fuck. If yeah. you watch if you watch this movie, they actually interview him throughout the whole thing. And no. He's telling the story like a fucking true sociopath. Like God. it's yeah. good. So so on that note, Ross, since you're the real professional filmmaker in here, what's your number one of 2015? Because I know you really liked Straight Out of Compton, but uh, Stra- Stra- Straight so Out of Compton, I love that. Yeah, movie. I've, I've seen just about everything there is. The, there's only a couple of, I'm I'm waiting for uh, the Revenant. I really really want to see. Yeah, that's gonna be yeah, crazy. That's rad. I, I cannot wait to see the fucking Revenant. It leaked online today. Um, oh, shit, that sucks. A million illegal downloads uh, uh, by 11 a.m. You're kidding. Uh, wow. One so million? Did, every every Oscar movie did, including The Hateful yeah, Eight. Yeah, The Hateful um, Eight yeah. went out today, too. Uh, so they're doing, they did all 40 of them, which is shitty, Creed, a, a bunch of them. So I, I'm waiting. I haven't seen The Revenant, and I haven't seen The Hateful Eight. Uh, but my, 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 yes, my favorite movie of the year thus far has been Straight Outta Compton. By far, you, you like know it, it cracked me. Up. It, been... it cracked me up when you when you posted it on your page, like, "Hey, go see Stray Out Compton, greatest movie of the year." And like, people were like, "Are you kidding me?" And like, no, that was actually a really fucking it great is, movie. It was huge about like friendship, betrayal, Everything. keeping all keeping of it. A cl- yeah, all of it. It was really actually. Really yeah, good. there's so many things on that. That one just. If, I I grew up in you know, in uh, Southern California, so a lot of that stuff hit home because you know I kind of lived through a lot of that time. I remember when Easy died. Everyone came to school crying and all this shit. So that movie was huge, man. Not just the culture side of it, but but uh, living through it, and as well as uh, just the storyline. It kind of reminds us of like what we're doing and potentially okay. what Article Fifteen can turn into and shit like that. It was it's pretty huge. That's legit. Yeah, and and w- when I watched it, like there, there's a couple things that struck me. One, one of the biggest things I love that just doesn't get done anymore is they actually went and found people who fit. And looked like the real people. They yeah. didn't go by like, oh, let's let's grab nine famous people and then yeah. jam them into the roles and then make them look like that. They went after people that Dude, actually fit Ice the roles Cube's and were believable. Son is like, is he stole the movie. Oh, scary, stole the movie. man. You're like scary, that guy. Scary, you look like the guy who played at Easy at E was amazing. Version. Yeah, man. I mean, yeah. great, but it's just the, the looks of the Ice Cube. His yeah, son. I'm scary. still a little mad that they didn't have an Arabian prince in there. That's kind of <laughs> yeah. I've met Ice Cube <laughs> multiple times. That's yours, Jared. And his son is just just dead on. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. It's the eyebrows. It's those high yeah. arching eyebrows. What do you think of the naysayers, Ross, that people are like, well, you, you kind of breezed past uh, Dr. Dre beating on women? And, I, all I've, that and I've got a stuff. great, I, I, I'm glad you asked that because I've got a great com- like comment for that because that's one of the biggest things I saw on threads of people who bitched about that movie was, oh, well, they breezed past this, they breezed past that. I wanted to see more of Tupac, I wanted to see more of Snoop. Here's the thing you, you, there were so many famous people around them at that time. You could have told either a nine-hour movie and involved all of those people's life stories, or you could have gone in 90 different directions, and it wouldn't have been an NWA movie. Right. I think the movie yeah. they chose and, and did in the end was a true NWA movie. If you want to see a movie about Snoop, do a, do a movie about Snoop. Do it. They're, they're shooting a movie yeah. about Tupac as we speak right now yeah. in Atlanta. Um, so, and I, I'm amped to see that. Um, I, I can't hope wait they to all see tie the, the in. Tupac biopic. The, the kid looks exactly yeah. like him, by the way. I was gonna say, the I kid hope they, they picked. I hope they, yeah, I hope they all tie in, and it would make it yeah. more epic. The kid Holy that shit. the kid that it's looks like West Tupac rap, really though. fucking looks like Tupac. Um, so that by far was my favorite movie of the year. I've breezed through half the Oscar movies already, like Trumbo, uh, the Danish Girl, all that other shit, and it's like. It's it's really good, and as an actor, you can sit there and watch it and be like, "Oh man, I really admire the acting of this," but I don't enjoy this movie. Straight out of Compton, I enjoyed the acting and I enjoyed the film itself, and I felt like I was I was part of something that was that was bigger than the time and bigger than the time period, and more important than the shit that's going on now. And, and it fucking and, uh, killed it at the box office too. 
Like that's right. exactly. So it, it checked all the boxes for me, Oscar wise. It didn't get nominated for a Golden Globe, which I thought was a crock of shit. Um, I, and I thought that kid, Ice Cube's kid, should have easily gotten a supporting nod for that. Like he was fantastic yeah, in that. I agree. And that's hard. That's hard for a, a non actor to roll in and not only crush a role, but crush a role that's your dad. Like you're playing your fucking dad in a movie. Imagine if you guys had to play your dad in Range 15. You think he comes to the Christmas dinner and he's like, just so you know, you're playing me in a movie. Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, don't I'm, get cocky. Yeah, don't get cocky, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> so so uh, to, that was my favorite. That was by far, thus far, my favorite movie of the year. Again, I, I want to preface this by saying I haven't seen The Revenant and I haven't seen Hateful Eight. Those, those don't come out until January here. And uh, I, I get SAG screeners, but those don't come until the, the first week of January either. So... Um, thus far, up until New Year's Eve, right now it's straight out of Compton. How about, how about you, Alex? Uh, I don't know. You know, I think out of all the films that I saw, I probably had to be straight out of Compton. Out of all the ones oh, I saw, God. this year that actually oh, too. Yeah, You know, yeah. I, not to sound fucking cheesy or anything, but I've known these guys in the room for quite a while, and um, uh, you know, I keep telling these guys, I'm like, hey, go see that fucking movie. Go see that goddamn movie. And the reason why I think that movie resonates with me the most is because you got these guys that just raw fucking talent. Um, you know, they get with someone that, you know, can fucking get, basically bring it out of them, sort of like you, Ross. And then, you know, um, they're sitting on the edge of something really fucking big, you know, with Range 15. And I think it's just such a great learning experience of no matter what comes down the road, there's going to be a lot of people that come on, on come out from the outsides that want to steer you down different directions. And it's never going to be as good. It's never going to be as pure as where you started. And I think that's the most amazing thing about that story. That's a legit comment. Yeah, I like that. Can we make straight out of El Paso? Yeah, straight out of yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You and I look, put I, El Paso. I, I, on I've that. seen a lot of music biopics. It's one of my favorite things to watch. And like the James Brown one was last year. I thought it was really well acted. Um, I thought it had you know everybody in the movie was really good, but I just I didn't like the framing device of the movie, and I thought it was just a little off. I love it. Whereas I going... thought straight out of Compton. Nailed it. Music. What about you, Jared? What's your movie? Music. Of the year so if, far? You're, if you're saying best music bios, that's Selena all the way. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> just Selena best, um, Okay. Best Jared. movie. What's, to, what's your favorite go movie to, of this year, Jared? Go to you Rocco. Can't say I've got to come back to me because I gotta. I gotta really think about that one hard. Yeah, you can't. Is it because you can't say pixels, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> shut up. Oh man, you can't really go to me because I'm too much of a fan of the the Straight Outta Compton. The only other thing I've you had, can hey, but it's okay to say straight out of Compton. I, I, like I'm there's huge, no. No, I'm a huge fan of that you guys too both mentioned it i say the only other thing that i've anticipated more was uh, the hunger games movie and so that's probably the only other thing that i've anticipated and wanted to see was hunger games but and did it live up did it live up to what you were hoping for it did it actually did it was outstanding it's very similar to the book i like when when uh when the book itself the movie comes out and it's very similar to it and has the same emotion they finally went back to the romance side of it the the two love stories and the and the whole conflict between the two and that's exactly why i love the book as well as the psychological operations that's in there that most people don't see like my daughter never noticed and i did so i definitely loved uh that movie and i'm excited for any other future ones if they decide to do anything else so i didn't see it but you gotta ask does katniss finally sit on Peter's face <laughs> God, uh, yes. they get they get a lot closer they get you a guys lot are talking about movies i was literally just thinking about her sitting on my face Oh dear, <laughs> she's an amazing actress. J Law, yes. Yeah. <laughs> J Law, everybody loves J Law. What about you, Matt Bass? What's your What's your favorite? I openly have to admit, I'm the least movie buff out of all of these guys. They everybody watches. I recently just got Apple TV, so I've watched a few more movies. But uh, to be honest with you, I've I've only watched one of them, the first one, Fast and Furious. But watching the seventh one, and it has nothing to do with Paul Walker dying. But I was legit impressed with that movie. It was. Funny, it was action packed. Some of those action sequences, I was just like, Holy shit, this is an awesome production! Um, so I'm gonna go with that uh, out of everything. I mean, it's 2015, Predator is still my fucking favorite movie in 2015 because <laughs> it's timeless. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, dude, but, dude, but Fast, Fast Furious, Furious 7, they, they always do it well, man. They it was do good, it. man. Especially Why do you think with it's seven of them already, of you know? course. But that one I think was exceptional. Yeah, they do well, they, they kill it every time. I think, and it, they think we, they knew he was gonna die like the way they part at the end. I'm sure they did a re edit, uh, before. No, they reshot. They had, they had to reshoot it because yeah. he died during filming. Yeah, they had his brother actually filling in for his, him. His brother, yeah. yeah, his brother played played him in other scenes, and yeah. then they CGI'd his face onto the brother. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, that's how they did it. Yeah, and the thing is, like, it's such a good story. Oh, you can continue to do that story for to fifteen, where me and the Rock fight, and uh, <laughs> and it's going to be just as funny and good. And those it's guys good. are awesome. 
I, I think hey, they, I, got, they, they, they signed on for three more. So I think I found you, you mine. You got a Ross. shot, Rocco. Yeah. I found I found what, mine. Oh God, what is this, Jared? <laughs> yeah. What yeah. the fuck? My favorite movie of twenty fifteen. He's whatever taking off his pants while he's saying. He's taking off his pants while he says this. <laughs> the leisure class. Hillary Duff did make a movie class. in twenty fifteen. <laughs> yeah. It, what Ross, the fuck is that? Ross, my favorite movie of twenty fifteen was the leisure class. <laughs> What is that? Uh, what is please that? explain. Please, please explain. <laughs> because Project Greenlight. Because Project fuck Greenlight. Jason Mann. <laughs> wow. What, what is the leisure class? It's the movie. The that leisure Pro- class is the movie that, that was made by uh, Project Greenlight for 2015. Season four. Oh, no. yeah. How much did they make that piece of shit for? $3 million. $3 million. Three million. That <laughs> fucking retard wasted every dime of HBO's money. I mean, no, he didn't waste it, though. No. Man. That made the best Project Greenlight it really ever did. done. Yeah, he's because he's such a fucking retard, they, they got everything they wanted out of that show. God. Yeah. I mean, here's my theory behind that. I, I think HBO said... Just give us a good show. We don't really give a fuck about the three million dollar movie because the show is so cheap to shoot. Yeah. Just just give us the most conflict and all that stuff. I mean, there was no celebrities in it. They shot at the same location every day for seventeen days. I don't. I I, I don't get it. All right. I so don't get it. I'm gonna break this up because I'm not a fucking movie buff, and I'm literally fine. Fall, fine. I'm falling asleep over here. With these Hollywood bullshit. How about we get into fun stories of 2015 and the coolest shit or your fucking best memory? Yeah. I want to. I want to yes. hear some fun times. I we agree. started off strong. You were. You're boring me, you know, with this Hollywood bullshit. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, Ross. That's fine. That's fine. What's your What's your best story then, Matt? There you go. 2015. I'm teasing you, Ross. What's your favorite story? I just I love you. It's on you. It's on you. No, uh, not my best story. I'm going to say my best moments of 2015. Is that kind of cool? Let's hear it. Okay, best 2000. Don't take mine. I don't want. Do you like my voice cracking? I love it. God, he actually hit puberty this year. Peter Brady. Peter Brady. We got a real Peter Brady on our hands. A true Peter Brady. No, my uh, dude. 2015. I think has been a big year for all of us. I I, two things that stand out was uh, Jared Taylor in 2014 telling me that. Hey, beat, beat, that, grab some beers over there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, jeez. In 2014, Jared saying that we should make a movie, and I was like, yeah, you're stupid. And then uh, filming a full feature film, uh, that was probably the crazy experience of my life. And then also, uh, we were on a whiskey tour, Ross, in, uh, where were we, Southern, South Carolina? Charleston. Charleston. I was Love Charleston. I had to report to do um, a, a retrain up for my contracting job. Um, cause I was getting ready to deploy soon after that. And I literally woke up, Jared and I were partying all night and, uh, well, we're doing an event, so whatever, I, I'm justifying it, but woke up in the morning, we're driving to the next event and I looked at Jared and I was like, I want to quit my job. He goes, fucking quit it. So I called in my work and I was like, I quit. So it was a big moment for me in 2015 cause pretty much 10 years of deploying, uh, I, I called quits. So it's, it's kind of cool. That's that's an amazing. It sounds like an amazing 2015, man. It, it's a big one, man. And uh, and our friendship. I'm being all sentimental with you, um, and getting to know you better. And just, dude, mm. at first you were just you know a dude that was going to direct the movie. But I truly value as one of my favorite people in this world, along with obviously everybody in this room. So appreciate you guys. Cheers to you, motherfuckers. I Cheers love you guys. Cheers to Ross. Thank you, man. Cheers to Thank Ross. You, Cheers to Ross. I love you guys. Drinking me under the table. I love you guys too. Under the table, legitimately. legitimately Jared, legitimately. what about you? What 2015, buddy? Oh. Under the table. This is. I, I would say 2015 is is probably been one of the greatest years of my life. Wow, um, that's ooh, huge to hear. I, I'm like dead it. serious because I'll say this. I let's see. I, I had a movie come out, Helen Keller versus Night Wolves, that yes. I loved. I got to make with uh, my friends. You guys were in it. Yep. Um, my lady was in it. My I got to put my child in it. Uh, who's one years old? So that was that was. And God funny. damn, is he handsome? God, he is. I know, I know. And that Santa uh, picture he was got great. to be in the movie. Uh, I have a, I had a book come out around the world, which is which is really crazy. Um, we have a podcast that literally everybody loves and is blown up. Like, and then I got to shoot Range Fifteen with with some of my best friends. Like, it was it's been an unbelievable year all the way around. It's been fucking rad, yeah, dude. I agree, man. I, I don't know how you beat. I don't know how you beat that. Yeah. Pretty hard, you awesome. know. Yeah. Like, uh, I so would, to, to, yeah. yeah, JT. That's your yeah. yeah. We're all getting so sentimental. I was, I was there like, was oh, yeah. uh, fuck, fuck. there was this time when we were in North Carolina to meet for script writing and Ranger up, and Nick bought those two whole sushi boats. Oh, oh my god, yeah. it was talking, so good. His best so time much. of that fifteen was, was food. <laughs> it's food. Yeah. This dude, motherfucker. This <laughs> way, uh, the. Hot dog stand at at, at Whitefish, Montana. Whitefish Montana. <laughs> oh, where where uh, uh, 
Dude, I, I, <laughs> it was so good. Wasn't oh it? my god, what did they call those things? The zombie or zombie the, yeah, dog. zombie, the dog. zombie dogs? Yeah, it had cream cheese and jalapenos Beans. and two hot dogs and chili. Dude, you disappeared where, that night just to go eat hot dogs. I, I where, where a man that we will not name literally uh, jumped on a six foot two female. That which could have been a man. It could have been a man. I think it was a man. Yeah. I don't even remember that. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Then there was there that was, was a weird story. Thanksgiving. That was that was good. We had a lot <laughs> of stuff. Talking about <laughs> I, I, wait, are you just naming your favorite eating moments? Yeah. I, feel, I feel like it's Anchorman yeah. where it's like, Brick, are you just naming things you love yeah. in the room? It's like, are you just naming just times naming you, ate you ate in 2015? He's just talking about food, epic yeah. food moments Dude, for him. That zombie dogs. The, the Whitefish trip was was pretty amazing. I you think know, it was amazing. We was met classy. we met a guy that uh, you know owns the largest companies in the world. You know, controls. Forty plus and, and billion knew, and dollars. And knew who we were. Yeah, and, and we did tell that story where we sang uh, "Pulled Us Aside," a dude or hugging a dude <laughs> yeah. in, in the hotel, and gave us did some very hugging a dude. noble words. Yeah, that was epic, man. That was good. Uh, so that was cool. I, I, honest, actually, the greatest part of that thing was the fact that we were all driving in an RV. That was right. <laughs> what was that? It was a seven-hour trip. Yeah, and just hanging out. We were just drunk, and Zach Bugley was driving. And yeah, that was a good time. <laughs> yeah, missed that. Damn. Uh, so was there any any other moments besides you eating uh, a shrimp po' boy I mean, that you that you loved in 2015? I thought it was really hilarious that I did that clip in How to Be Tactical where I just jumped on my belly and said Tactical Penguin, and that's become a thing. That, that was classic. <laughs> <laughs> Jared was really motivated that day. He was, he was on point. Uh, Jared, Jared not, was, not today. Yeah. Not Not today. Yeah. Not today. Not today. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. I love it. Those and of course, you know, Range Fifteen. That one was. <laughs> yeah, was and, a that, lot, and that movie. That thing. was a lot of long yeah. days in the heat. Like I realized uh, halfway through it when we're carrying heavy weapons and kit and everything. Like, why the fuck did we write this in? Like, <laughs> right, I, right. <laughs> it's, yeah. This is our chance to be like, oh hey, we can make a movie about whatever we want. What do we do? We're wearing kit. We're carrying heavy yeah. weapons in a hundred degree no, weather. That <laughs> that didn't bother me at it's all. So it funny. was covered in fucking the fake blood that was ripping uh, out my day. fucking hair. Dude. My that was armpits. Shit. My, I think my armpits are still scarred from that. Wait, can I just pause a second? We are so fucking washed up. We're complaining about <laughs> fake blood <laughs> in a fucking movie. <laughs> we are washed uh, up as fuck. There you go. True yeah, movie yeah. stars. Bring me True back. fucking movie yeah. stars, oh, dude. Yeah. Jeez, we went I, full Hollywood yeah. right there, dude. See, Shit. Uh, you guys really turned. Yeah. It was like, oh god, the worst was when this There was only was there was only me. three hot meals. Yeah. I didn't get that brunch in. The, I didn't have my makeup yeah. completely done and they made me do a scene. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, there was New York strip steak at lunch every yeah. single day. That was cooked. What about by you, Rocco? Chef. 2015, buddy. Man, 2015 for me was pretty pretty crazy. I think uh one of the biggest Things for me that has kind of taken over my life as well as uh, it's kind of changed. I think all of us is uh, Drinking Bros. The the yeah, the, uh, the yeah. introduction of Drinking Bros. and why we originally did it was because of a podcast we wanted to do, and we were finally able to make that happen. And by then, we already had twenty thousand you know followers, supporters of of the members the members yeah. of the group in seventy plus chapters. So I think when that came to, um, I took a big part of trying to help admin in a lot of the groups and Absolutely, stuff. You did and great, uh man. and uh that's been huge man to see what the impact that that group is. You know, there's something for everybody too. You right. got Drinking Bros nerds, Drinking Bros right. singles. Singles, oh. there's singles. I want to be uh, Can I be in there? I'm yeah, gonna... yeah, you can add Mel. Mel, <laughs> Mel, Mel doesn't care. I mean, yeah. So so I think show, that was that was That was a big deal because I think we what we were able to do is reach out to veterans and help uh build a community of like-minded individuals and that's important you know it's kind of cool too i think often people get stuck up with a daily feed of what's going on but even through you because i i don't you know me i don't yeah. get caught up too much in the social media stuff i kind of leave yeah. that to, to you guys that's that's you guys are way better at it than i am i'm kind of you know position myself out of there but like seeing the back end of all the stuff that goes on when at face value you would yeah. never see i'm like I mean, like it's insane, man. Yeah. Like the shit that just people that are struggling in their own life that are helping other people. Right, I, it's you huge. guys are fucking awesome. I love it's it, man. You, you've made 2015 a good year for us and yes. a lot of other people. It's fucking rad. Uh, I think the other thing for me yeah. is I was another one of the guys that walked away from a career. Uh, yeah, you know, you were I walked huge, away from huge, the border patrol, and uh, because uh, I believe in what we're doing, you know, and I, be- I I enjoy what we're doing, and so what better way to make money, uh, you know, and 
every day spend it with your friends and family and have purpose and have purpose exactly wake up knowing that you're trying to do something better hey, for cheer, the community cheers so. to quitting government jobs yeah. for 10 years yeah. fuck yeah. <laughs> it's really yeah. scary Ross yeah. I, I gave away all health insurance my 401k fuck yeah. it yeah fuck it selling cars fuck it fuck <laughs> it yeah I mean look you, you guys are running your own company and to the same extent like this is you know exactly what I went through where it was like you know you give up I because SAG gives you insurance and all that shit, and you give all of that up, and you're, you're uncertain about the future, and you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, shit. If you would have told me last year that you guys would have raised, you know, all this money on Indiegogo to make a movie about a zombie apocalypse, I, I would have told you. I, like, I, I literally thought you were fucking insane to do it. Um, you know what I call it? I, I didn't I, think I, it was going to happen. I call success is the mere sum of hard work and motivation. Ooh, I like that. This yeah. Ooh, that's pretty it's much like, Einstein. It really is. Bro. Goddamn, it really is. Goddamn my, Socrates. <laughs> and my favorite, by the way, my favorite moment, my moments of, uh, God, I'm drinking. Um, uh, my favorite moments of 2015 was telling you on the very first day of shooting Rain 15 when you walked out of your trailer, I said, hey. Right? Right? Yeah, if you didn't make a, a yeah. video on That's YouTube so funny, in dude. your room and put it up on the internet, uh, you would now you're starring in a movie with William Shatner, and you're you're you were literally walking in to the first day of a scene with William dude, Shatner. Dude, Al- to- it's so funny you say that. Alex and I went to dinner tonight, and he literally I don't know how that conversation came up, but it was like when we were laughing about how you came up the first day, and you're like, "Can I talk to you real quick?" I was like, "Yeah, what up, dude?" And you're like, "Just just think." Like you know, three years ago, you decided to wake up just one morning and go, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna film a fucking YouTube video in my bedroom," and now you're on a set with William Shatner. <laughs> you have a trailer. Just what, what does he Let say that at the end? Yeah. What does he say at the end? Uh, are you asking for my Ross? Patterson yeah, yeah. What, is, what does he say at the end? Dude, did all this shit happen because you literally woke up and decided to make a YouTube video. Think about that shit. Yeah, he goes, "Think about, <laughs> think about that, think about that." Yeah, and then I just walked away. Like, I, was like I, I. I but but here's the yeah, here's what? the beauty of this That's the weird. second the, the second half of this that you didn't see when I when I walked out of you uh, I was grabbed by somebody else to go see William Shatner and so I met him for the first time and uh, he was rehearsing in his you know private dressing room and all that stuff and he's rehearsing dead serious like for you know like he would for for Boston Public Fucking or rad. Boston Legal <laughs> <laughs> Hey you know I actually and he'd want you know. He was rehearsing because he's he was a lawyer in Boston Legal. He's he's a lawyer in this movie. He's rehearsing this Emmy. You know, he's won like five Emmys for that role to he's save me, Pony. <laughs> to save yeah, me, Pony. To be with Matt Best in a fucking thing to talk about Article Fifteen T-shirts yeah. about me, Pony. <laughs> hey, you know, somewhere I will interject and I'll shut up after this. But I, I, 2015, I think my the best thing. It's like. I get accolades for it's Oats and Matt's channel, dude. None of this would have ever even come fucking close to possible if it wasn't for JT, Rocco, Alex, all these dudes. It's like their hard work. I often get fucking affirmation and accolades. Like, oh, Matt, you're the best. Like, dude, I, I didn't really do much. All the other guys pulled away. I kind of just stood in front of the camera and said, bikini snap. So <laughs> cheers to you fucking assholes. Yeah, I love man. you all, man. Cheers, man. Cheers. Yeah, we can't cheers. forget all the guys behind the scenes as well that just... Oh, yeah. Good old Cody, Cody and, Zach and Zach and Brad. And Brad. We Brad. love you guys. He's, I mean... Garrett. I think, dude, dude, it's funny, Garrett, Russ. Garrett. Garrett. Dude, it's funny, Russ. I remember uh, day one on the set one when we were uh, shooting at uh, that jail, the, the interview scene. And uh, you you were like kind of talking to William Shatner, you know, trying to do the you know A list celebrity. Hey, I'm here talking with you. I'm the director. You know, you you you, you matter. And then as you left, um, I think it, what was it, Bran, your your line yeah. producer? He was like, all right. yeah. yeah, yeah. He was like, all right, now you got to get ready for the zombie scene. He's like, zombie. There's a zombie scene. <laughs> yeah, I'm, he was, I, I'm a zombie. I'm a zombie. And he and he literally <laughs> goes. How does one as a zombie act? <laughs> the team was what, would, what would Shatner and zombie say? So what kind of zombie is this? Is this a fast zombie? Because I'm old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's, by the way, that's going to be my hardest thing for 2016 is I enjoyed working with you guys so much. And you're non-Hollywood and it's fun and we got our job done and you guys are my best friends in real life. So it's like, dude, 2016, I, I'm trying hard not to go back and work with these Hollywood assholes because it's like, I don't want to hear questions like that. So, 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 <laughs> well, guess what? So, you don't have how to. How would a zombie to... act? So is, how that your, a, like, is that your goal? I'm not your fucking dad. <laughs> is yeah, that your 2016, your what do they call goal that? to work with a, us? A resolution. Your, resolu- your 2016 oh, resolution is to be... Do you guys have re- resolutions? Fuck I no. do. Of course I do. I, I do. 
I do. I do. Yeah, absolutely. You have a re- okay, tell me your resolution, and I'm going to tell you why it's so fucking stupid. Go ahead. Yeah. Russ. God, you're so. My, okay, here, here's 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 my New Year's resolution to see how long through the year I can I can work without Hollywood and just truly my friends. Because my oh, like dream that. would be okay, to do yeah, the that's, sequel. That's easy. But but my dream my dream would be the, the this we we already have the sequel planned out to, to Range 15. Yes. It's called Rescue 16. We already have that. My dream would be to do this at the end of the year. Blow it the fuck out. Get Nick Cage. Get a bunch of people. Uh, write write a sequel to A Night She Cries While He Rides a Steed, and and do this podcast. And, and that would be my dream. Twenty sixteen. Dead serious. That that that's my resolution. So that's not really Whether a resolution. That that's like not, that's a just life a goal. goal. That's, that's your, a goal. That's reality. Resolutions are stupid. It, 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 Goals it is, are but correct. it's it's hard because it's you you guys know the other jobs that I do, and it's I'm you know being I, I have a lot of offers on the table for a lot of other shit, but I also know what that involves, and it involves going back to. Working with people who are going to ask me those fucking questions every day of, yeah. how would a zombie act <laughs> if I was, you know, if you were touched by a clown, what would you say? And it's it's like I don't, I, I, don't, I don't think want we're going to fucking hear that. I don't think you're going to have that problem yeah. anymore. I think we have, we already know we have planned almost for we the next five it. years. Yeah, and we'll we'll just keep pushing. Yeah, like, again, if you, yeah, yeah, and and like I said, look, look, it's not a problem, and I, and I don't want to seem like it's a bit like it's it, look, it's a great problem to have. It's rich people problems, like what the fuck ever. But um, I, I would. Still, much rather work with my best friends every day, yeah, um, and not have to deal with with uh, that you know the Holly, typical Hollywood shit where it's just like, you know, I don't want to tell you your your motivation for crying right. or you know you have a group that works as hard as you do now and that's rare to find yeah and and exactly. I have goals whereas typically everybody in Hollywood is is really really lazy. And you're trying to get them up to speed and, and, and be on your level, whereas I don't have that with you guys. Um, and it's nice, but it's it's very, very rare. You know what I want to do in 2016? I want to hear Suck it. Suck a few less You got to stop. Don't no, say it. Don't say I it. I want to party with Christoph Waltz. <laughs> Who the fuck is that? Who is that? Yeah, uh, Django. <laughs> Django. I love him. He's the dentist. <laughs> Django, oh, he's I'm also the, the colonel. The he's so badass. The German. Dude. I love him because sir, if you are raising your gun in a in a violent action, uh, I must take appropriate measures uh, to ensure my own security. I gotta say, those Spectre. Fuck yeah, so. I love it. Have that you gun. heard the yeah. nicknames that they have given me? <laughs> I love Sergio it. Hunter. He's, it's because like I'm very Jared, good he's at become my show. the new Christopher Walken to me. He yeah. drags Agreed. out all of his words, oh. and it's very slow. Then we hit delete on the email, but we, you still have to enter the box. In- Gors- <laughs> like, I can't. Like it's he just was in Glorious Bastard. Bastard. I, 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 I just said I want to party with him. Bastard? I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I don't need to be in a movie with him. I don't. I just want to party. Dude, with him. I want to hang out with him. In the movie, what in Glorious Bastards? Is that how you say it? Yeah. God, he, he yeah. played one of the biggest assholes you've ever... Like, you hated the guy. Yeah, you Genuinely. Look, he's, fanta- he's, yeah. a, he's fantastic in yeah. Django Unchained yeah, as well. He, I watched Django two nights ago, he's actually. He's got to be again, in again. Hateful Eight. He has to be. Because uh, Tarantino puts him in all of his yeah, shit. Yeah, I yeah. Get, yeah, true. Do we not know the cast? I don't. I haven't seen anything on the Hateful Eight yet. Uh, of Hateful Eight? Yeah, it's Kurt Russell, Samuel Jackson. Uh, the guy from Justified. I'm blanking on his name. Good Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell's Kurt nailing Russell's these. Awesome, and he's nailing these they westerns. They brought back, and Jennifer Jason Lee is coming back from the '80s. Ooh. She's she's in the movie as well. She's the, she's actually the one that's captive, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She she's uh, the cat. Oh, and your boy Channing Tatum is in. Oh, Channing yeah. Tatum. So pissed he didn't invite us. <laughs> Someday. Yeah. 2016. You didn't get, you didn't get an invite to the resolutions. We all got to get abs so we can be in the next like dancing one that he does. The, the magic mics. Yes. Yeah. I don't. I, no, I, I'm good. I hey, think that's over. Eventually, think we that's have to over. make a submarine movie. Uh, I, I actually got a funny story about Quentin Tarantino and veterans. If if you guys don't mind, if you add this, because because no, a, no, a lot because a lot of people fucking hate Quentin for whatever reason, and especially with all the cop bullshit going on right now, you know, he's right. getting yeah. a lot of hate. But um, so I had some buddies that were down in uh, I think I want to say Eastern California is where they're at, and I think that's where they were filming that Western set for Django. Weren't they up in uh, Big Ross? Bear? I don't know, Ross. You could probably yes, speak yeah, speak yeah. on that, but I think it's the old Deadwood set or whatever. But it's out there in California. It, it is, yeah, yeah. So it's in, yeah, it's in uh, yeah, it's in California. Okay. So, so, so a bunch of my buddies, they were out there uh, doing some training, and they hit some bars that night. And fucking Tarantino was in town um, for fucking Django. Empty, and they're doing some shots, and in walks drunk ass Quentin Tarantino, and he slams his fucking hand on the bar. And he's like, why the fuck aren't you guys down at the bar down the street? Because we're having a fucking rap party. 
And the guys are like, I don't know. And he like he t- they told him they were vets and everything, and he bought them all around and fucking invited them down the street to the next bar where every, oh, the whole crew and cast were fucking partying. And he continued to buy more shots for them. Yeah, you know, you buy a drink for a veteran, okay, but then you protest cops. I mean, I'm gonna go with an asshole. <laughs> well, that's true. Too. That is true too. Just, <laughs> that is true too. You know, but at the no, same no, time, no, I feel it's kind of cool. That's cool. That is no, cool. That's cool, that. man. That's good stuff. 2016, Matt. What, what 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 do you have planned for? What are some goals instead of uh, what, you know resolution? So yeah, to to speak of my point of resolutions, I hate resolutions because I think they're a a temporary fix to say I'm going to do this without any self commitment, knowing that you're going to follow through with that goal. <laughs> okay. But, what are your goals? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I hate resolutions. <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to get fit in January. Yeah, okay. and then no one ever You're going to get a gym membership and eat Twinkies, bitch. Shut the fuck That's up. That's why I bought mine in December. <laughs> yeah, December is the best. <laughs> <laughs> the fight. Now, 2016, man, if we can just... I, I'm just having a good time with you guys and continue to honestly bring entertainment to the community and, and to our friends and, and the people that and listen to our shit and support us. That, that's all it is. Less yeah. travel the first half of the year? Yes. Dude, yeah. Yes. Th- dude, this last month, JT, has been fantastic. We I don't know. travel anymore. It's been no, fucking nice. great. We might Fuck have traveling. to just cancel that. Fuck travel. Come to El Paso if you want to fucking do something. <laughs> yes, that's, that's what just we're come, doing. That's we're we're building an empire, come so to El Paso. just come here. We're, we're almost going to get Alex here, which is uh, going to be awesome. You yeah. know, that's actually, to, before we close out the, the podcast... Tip. So Alex has done a lot of things with Rocco and I and JT as well. Um, I, I did a motivation video kind of speaking about my perspective in life and how I've kind of found happiness through some of the crazy shit I've been through in life. Um, Alex filmed that. He has a way of um, depicting your own emotion, if that makes sense. So it's kind of a cool way. Like I'm not a good way of – I'm an emotional dual dude, but it's hard for me to – to, to well, articulate he, that yeah. in like a, a video sense, I think it's because he, he's uh, yeah, cinematic. He's, he's been there with us. He's he's well, he understands. He, he understands our culture. our culture exactly. So he's able to since he's the artist of the, of the of that sort. He's able to put that in perspective on what we want. So like, yeah, we have actually. So on that note, we have a lot of cool stuff that Alex has been working his ass off. Um, Rocco has a really cool project that will be coming out fairly soon, scary. and as well as uh, something. That Rock and I did together. That's yep. very, very personal. You guys to us. are launching this New Year's Day, correct? No, yeah. no, it'll be okay. probably about uh, the, the sixth. Okay, I think whenever yeah, it's done. We'll whenever it's done, yeah. whenever it's correct. So um, scary stuff. Scary, scary. I think we're going to be vulnerable out there very. for the first time, but God. I think it'll be cool. So I think it's good. Hey, Alex, anything you want to say or anything you want to uh, push on your on your side? No, no, just. You know, uh, I did a I did a road trip this year that I'd say my highlight of the year has to be. Um, so Ross, you could definitely speak on this, but they all they ever push to you if you ever want to start in this film industry, you need to get a full production down your on your record. So uh, Jared and Matt invited me yep. out to North Carolina. Um, I filmed some stuff from them, and I just decided to do something that I've always wanted to do, which is hitchhike across America. Insane, dude. <laughs> and I hitchhiked from Jacksonville, Florida, all the way to Santa Monica, California. I did in 22 days. and We made uh, sure you had a gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of my buddies, uh, who shall remain anonymous, uh, gave me a Makarov that he took off an objective <laughs> from some Taliban people so that, that no so longer... Great. You're hitchhiking with an untraceable weapon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, that would make great GoPro footage. You know, <laughs> whacking a dude and then the only way dumping to do it in a storm it. drain. There you go. You know, and uh, but I have to say I, I'm very fortunate and honored to be part of such an amazing community that I absolutely love because out of 16 hitchhikers, after 16 hitches that got me from the east to west coast, 15 of those people were all veterans. Um, and how many and of those were drinking bros? Yeah, how many wow, of those were drinking really? bros? Yeah, all, really? all of them. And I, 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 I got <laughs> all of them I, were drinking I, bros. I, I gotta say, I gotta say, I, I, my pack was an Alice, and that literally got me from uh, Indio, California, to Riverside, California, because the guy literally, I was sleeping on a fucking golf course over a mountain pass, and I went into the hotel by the highway to get free breakfast, and this ex eighty second Airborne guy who was a trucker saw the pack. We started talking. He's like, well, where do you need to go, man? I'll get you there. And, <laughs> there's so there's some big-time cool. drinking bros that, that helped you through your way. Yeah, absolutely. The community of dr- drinking bros were amazing. They kicked it off, they, and they, yeah. they kept it going. Yeah. They kept me going. You know, I they, can't they wait for that of, documentary. Yeah, they got me out of shitholes like Baton Rouge, you know, Louisiana, <laughs> after I broke up a fight with they have really good, crackheads. They have really Waffle good House. Cajun food, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we, <laughs> we, we, we got them here to El Paso, picked them up, and as well as and a couple guys took them down to Tucson from Tucson and continued on. And, yeah. Yeah, it was great. So I'm that when does fortunate. that come out? 
uh, probably uh, f- spring of this year, and I find inspiration from you, Ross, with Helen Keller. I'm just going to fucking put it out to the world for free so everyone can just goddamn enjoy it. Yeah, what a balls move. Just fuck it. I'm going to make a production. <laughs> Give it free, right, Ross? You know it. Yeah, I mean, holy shit. That was, that was really fucking crazy, but I... I I will say this is probably one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. That's awesome. Um, I got a lot of emails from uh, a lot of people around the world who would watch it and just said, thank you. I, I can't afford this. I, I can't afford this movie for the holidays, and um, I'm really happy you did this. So it was probably one of the greatest things I've ever done, seriously. Other than that dude on the, uh, on, um, the was, backstage of Jimi dudes. Hendrix concert. Two concert. dudes. He did two dudes. I don't know what I just yeah, said. Yeah, there, there was two dudes yeah. that night. <laughs> it, was, it was two <laughs> dudes. All right, so Rocco, a, you're going to... There was a whole enough paper. <laughs> yeah. You're going to hand right. out our drinking bro of 2015. This is a big one. This is... Yeah, who, who is the, the first drinking bro, bro of the year? Of yeah. the yeah. year. The drinking bro of the year. Drinking bro. Of the year. Of the year, and uh, I, can we get a drum roll? Yeah, can, hey, can yeah. we get a drum roll? Sounds like a helicopter. Yeah. Well, this is gonna be. And the drinking bro of 2015 is Rocco. It's Cody Grin. You're the worst. Yeah, I'm drinking. How do you pronounce his name? Grunrud. Grand Rud. Grand Rud. So, so I saw your face. I knew you were gonna mess his name yeah, up, and I, I just could, really you, wanted you to. I know it's fine. The drinking bro of the year, hey, Cody yeah. Gain. Yeah, yeah, he didn't need to practice. Cody no, Grand no. Rud. Yeah, I fucked it up. But either way, he knows who the fuck he is. Uh, the guy has been a big part of Drinking Bros from the beginning. Very uh, He helps with a lot of different things. I mean, I can't even begin to explain all the stuff that he's involved in with the, with the company and everything else, as well as uh, R15 Extra. Uh, yeah, yeah. Overall, Drinking Bros as a whole and a lot of side projects that we're really moving on to, to make it a more... Uh, immersive experience um, would not have been possible if it wasn't for Cody. Right. For sure. so, so Cody is definitely our drinking bro of the year. Cody, we fucking love you. Cody, you're the man, bro. Let's you cheers that. Man. Let's, Cody, we let's love cheers you. that Seriously, dirty asshole. You. Cheers. 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 Hell yeah. And on that note, happy 2015, everybody. I hope it was a great one. We hope 2016 is an even better one. For Matt Best, Jared Taylor, Rocco, our, our wonderful guest star, Alex, I am Ross Patterson. Thank you for the last episode of Drinking Bros for 2015. We fucking love you. Happy 2016, everybody. We love you guys. No no resolutions, you fuckers. Goals. Get it done, baby. (laughs) Just get it done. Choose life. Choose life. Join a jam. Join a jam and then leave during Martin Luther King Day. (laughs) Love you guys. All right. Take care.